Okay, so we have another pecan here, just actually across the street, and a different situation is going on here. With, we've got a little bit of dieback, I believe, at the top. I'm not certain if those, if that tissue is actually dead. It looks like it might be, but you can see it's definitely yellower than the pecans we were looking at a moment ago, and it's dropping its leaves soon. It's it's early leaf drop, and there's a few things that cause that. And one of them is the black pecan aphid, which is what I think we're looking at here. The black pecan aphids, they become an issue later in the season and it's fall. So we're looking at damage that had happened. Yeah, I'm pretty positive we're looking at black pecan aphid damage here. I can't quite reach it, but this is exactly what they will do. They cause this browning in between the veins as well. There's also pecan scab but that's earlier in the season. I, I think we're looking at black pecan aphid damage here. I wish I could get up there and kind of see if we've got, if we could actually see the aphids themselves. It's possible, it's, but it's a little late in the season. I mean, it is fall, but this is what they do. They make the leaves drop early. They don't photosynthesize properly. It can be a fairly bad pest, particularly in a case like this, when I believe the tree is already stressed. Yeah, that's dieback up there. That Those dead dead limbs there, that's dead. So this tree is already stressed out. And I don't have all of my diagnostic tools with me, nor should I. This is state property. I probably should not be walking around too terribly much. But I would poke around and check the moisture levels here because what I'm looking at is it looks like it's not getting proper irrigation. If I had to take uh, a calculated guess by the look of the grass, Live oaks are pretty tough. The leaves are small on that live oak right there, but it's looking pretty good. Oh, this one's not. Okay, so there's a live oak. We're going to take a look at that in a second. We don't want that. That's really not doing well, and that's not been doing well for a few years. But back to the pecan. I believe we're looking at black pecan aphids. I don't have my diagnostic tools, and it is, I, I suggest we be very careful about misdiagnosing, but I think, or at least why I think it's this way. It's, it was already predisposed to insect activity and diseases, but I think it's not getting proper irrigation. It's possible the soil is compacted. I do not know that for certain. There are certain weeds that you will see when the soil is compacted or when it's low on nitrogen, but this just doesn't look to be a very well-maintained uh, area, and I think it's water. Okay, so we've got, I'm almost certain, that we're looking at black pecan aphids. Uh, I don't think it's pecan scab because it's so late in the season. And so we're gonna move along for this. Of course, lab testing is always good just to confirm all of this, but I don't see anything major. Let's just look. We don't want to have fruiting bodies on the trunk. Like I said earlier, we don't wanna see them at the base. Pecans are prone to Ganoderma. Just gonna take a quick look. I do not see any. Do not see any. I do not see any bore activity. So this could definitely use a mulchering just to kind of help it out and proper irrigation. Now let's just look real quick at this live oak. It's very thin. It doesn't have the energy for the tw the twig elongation. It's very short, and we've got dieback on the ends, and we have a buried root flare. This is a big one. Buried root flares they cause. Ah, we've got crown gall too. Um, when there's a buried root flare like this, when soil comes up, it activates these little buds and then the roots begin to strangle the tree. We'll talk about girdling roots later in another video, but that's what we're looking at. We're looking at all these little roots in here and we're looking, we're at the, we're looking at the surface. That's just right here. If you go deeper, which will be difficult, an air spade would be the best way to get this exposed or carefully by hand. You expose a little bit, prune off certain roots carefully. That's when an arborist, again, is good to call. There's a certain amount of these roots that you can prune off at once. Too many and you can damage the tree and send it into a major decline. And in a tree case like this, that's not looking good. You could absolutely kill it. Huh. Yeah, we've got... This tree is not doing well. It's already strangling it, girdling roots. This is crown gall. That's a bacteria. 
yeah, it, it's real crumbly like that. Root collar excavations are best for that as well. Okay, so we'll get into buried root flares on another video, but this is exactly, it's been like this a long time. Long time, all of these, these are surface girdling roots. I mean, these are just like on the surface. Look at that, just dying off. It's killing the tree. And then you've got a tree that looks like this. Oh, we've got insect activity. Little tiny hanger here. This one's no big deal, but just imagine this a lot larger up in a tree that's 30 or 40 feet. And then the wind blows and then it, something like that just falls down on a little dog. So we don't want those up in the canopy. I think I saw one over here in this pecan. Yeah, there's one in this pecan right here too. Little hanger. So if you're talking to a tree company, you can say that you have a hanger in your tree at about, this one's about eight, um, 10 feet high. Not terrible, but if that were to fall under the right circumstances, I mean, it could fall on a little tiny dog or something and it hurt it really bad. Anyway, we've got dieback on this live oak. It's not doing well at all. And that I will contribute it almost 100% to the root flares being covered for many, many years. And in addition to that, it's got, it makes it more susceptible to other things. Ooh, oh, yeah, old damage. This tree's having a hard time. It needs some help. Okay, we're gonna move on to some other trees. Okay, here we go. We've got a tree that's after my heart. This is exactly the kind of stuff that I just love to get my hands on right here. And it's a challenge. This poor guy has got so much going on. We've got dieback, dead limbs, large branches, laterals, and a limited rooting area. And the leaves are small. This is a post oak. These leaves are small for a post oak. Um, let's see what we got right here. Okay, so I'm really trying to keep this video a little shorter than some, but we have a serious decline. Uh, we've got the dead limbs here that are actually a hazard. They need to be pruned off. We have more that have recently died up at the top, which makes sense. And we have aphid activity, possibly, um, well, we do have some symptoms of woolly aphids. I'll put a picture in there. But uh, they leave, they're kind of a little cottony like that. The, the biggest issue here is this limited rooting area. This tree's roots wants to go out about two times, maybe three times as far as this canopy, which would be way out over to there. And, and it's not. It's limited to right there. It's like putting a tree into a tiny pot. And the roots are damaged on top of that. So we've got old root damage. We've got a limited rooting area in this little tiny hole. And the tree just can't sustain itself anymore. There's many things that should be done here. Um, mulch, compost and mulch, like an inch of uh, compost, about two inches of mulch would be good in monitoring the water. And maybe, maybe a careful deep root fertilization, maybe. And I only say that because there's immobile nutrients that it could probably use or do a soil sample to be safe, okay? But it definitely needs compost and mulch at the very least because the roots that are here need everything they possibly can get. And then we have some, we have a fruiting body here of chicken in the woods, sulfur fungus, it's called a few things. It's really kind of beautiful, but it's right there on some old, an old pruning cut. So it's decaying that it's rotting it away. And when I see sulfur fungus or chicken in the woods like that, I'm always a little concerned. It's not as alarming as say Ganoderma. And if we had that at the base here, we would really have a serious issue. But I, I, I do not see any Ganoderma. But we do have uh, old root damage. It, it just doesn't have the root system that it needs. This poor tree is just going to struggle. And it's doing what it does when it can't handle itself. It lets portions of it go. Also, when a tree gets older, particularly oaks, well, a lot of trees, they, call, they do something called retrenching when they start to drop large portions of their canopy in order to survive. But that does not explain 
the extensive the, ex, the extensive dieback and large limbs, lateral branches. We it's just lost so much. It's under attack by aphids. Uh, we've got chicken in the woods, sulfur fungus going on right there. <laughs> this baby needs some help, and uh, yeah, so. I, it's going to have a hard time if it can be taken care of. But since it does have a limited rooting area, we really need to maintain what it's got left. Okay, so we need to move on. But here you go. This is a good example of a tree with limited rooting area. It's chronic. And the effects of that are leaves that are very small. It's got aphid activity, which insects come in once the tree's kind of stressed. It's got symptoms and signs of that. And then the sulfur fungus or chicken of the woods. We've got some decay going on. It's not containing its uh, pruning cuts, and it's not containing its decay well at all. So, uh, yeah, this baby, yeah, needs some love. All right, let's move on.